Now that we've got a new project in ARCHICAD, what are we going to do? We need tools, we need drawing elements. On the left hand side of our ARCHICAD screen we have a toolbox. Now ARCHICAD's screen is made up of lots of palettes and toolbars. We find these in Window, Toolbars and Palettes. Now you see that the ones that have a tick are the ones that are currently turned on. There's a lot more here that aren't turned on. If we had them all, we'd need a very, very large screen, otherwise they'd fill up our page. So these are the standard ones, so you probably start with those. But once you become more accustomed to using ARCHICAD, you might want to develop and actually build your own toolbars. This is something that I do with my work. And if you jump on YouTube and have a look at some of my videos, I actually have already got a video where I'm showing you how to create a customized toolbar. But for now, let's just have a look at the standard toolbox on the left-hand side of the screen and see what they do. This is broken up into several subcategories. We have select, which is the arrow and the marquee. So these are the tools that we use to select drawn objects. The next one is design. And design is talking about the standardized three-dimensional aspects. So remember again, ARCHICAD is primarily a BIM program. So we're building a three-dimensional model and then we're taking two-dimensional information out of that three-dimensional model. So we draw primarily with three-dimensional objects. Let's just have a look at one of these. The most common one might be a wall. When we choose that wall tool, the next box that becomes very important is our info box. Now that info box is the information or the details of the type of the wall that we're currently using. Now, if I close this again, we have all of the info, info box info visually represented here in the info box and if I use my mouse button to scroll we see that there's quite a lot shown just on this tab but it's not completely comprehensive so if we want to see this in more detail we click on the icon again so in this case it's a wall open the settings dialog box and then we can see a lot of information about the wall so for now what we're seeing is that our wall for instance is 3000 100 millimeters high. When we're using ARCHICAD we always talk in millimeters that is the architectural unit of measurement. When we're looking at our wall types we have a simple wall and a simple wall if I was to draw that means it's just and I might need to zoom in a little bit maybe I need to zoom in a lot means it's just an outline with a fill. That's a simple wall. If I go back into my wall tool, the next one along, so, sorry, simple or basic, the next one along is a co composite wall. And there's a lot of built-in composites already built into this standard file. Let's choose a, a fairly common one. We'll use something like cavity brick. 270 is suggesting that it's 270 mil thick which means it's made from 110 mil of brick, 50 mil cavity, and another 110 mil brick. Now when I draw this again, I left click, reference point, I don't really care where I'm placing at the moment, but I click, you'll see that my reference line is on one side of the wall. In this case, it's on the lower side of the wall, which actually represents here the outside face. I hold shift to restrain if I want to draw in a straight line, and I click to place it. Now you see that when I zoom in, Although that was called a 270 cavity brick, there's actually something else going on here. If I was to measure this, we see that it's made up of 110 mil brick, 50 mil cavity, 110 mil brick, and then 5 mil and 10 mil. I don't really know what that is. Maybe it's a furring channel and plasterboard. Maybe it's some type of a render. Realistically, it shouldn't be there based on its composite name. But essentially that's how it works. And if I want to understand how that works, if I go Options, Element Attributes, Composites, then we can see the composite breakup of this particular material. So yes, I was right. It's essentially a furring channel and plasterboard. But it didn't suggest that in its name. All right, I'm getting a bit off topic. Let's draw one more type of wall. And the final type of wall that we have is a complex profile wall. We don't have actually any of these built in so we'd have to make them 
and you see that the only one that we do have is called gutter and fascia, which sounds a bit strange because that doesn't actually sound like a wall, does it? No, but it's drawn in the same way. So let's draw this quickly. And now we're going to select these three and open them up in 3D. So select all three, right click, show selection marquee in 3D. Just going to change my orientation. You can see that this composite works not only just in plan, but also in 3D. We can see a cavity. We can see the different materials built up in three dimensions as well as in plan. Of course, it's just an extrusion. But when we look down here at this one, we see again an extrusion, but it's getting quite, like the name suggests, complex. And while a gutter isn't a wall, it's using the wall tool, which is an important aspect to understand. Just because it's called a wall, that means we can still use it for other things. Essentially, we can use it for anything that's linear. And I could join walls together in different angles. Or in this case, gutters. And that would be the result. Of course, we have to realize what's inside and what's outside. I made this backwards, and the gutter therefore looks a bit silly. I could redraw it, or I could also flip it around. And now we see that my gutter makes a bit more sense because it would be as if it was wrapping around a building. Let's continue on our merry way. So design, we have wall, door, window, column, beam, slab, stair, roof, shell, skylight. These are the most common ones, not skylight perhaps. Curtain wall, morph. The shell and the morph tools are very interesting if we're wanting to get organic objects. Before their introduction to Archicad, which is the last few years, Archicad was quite limited in its organic composition. We have objects. We have a very large library, <laughs> hopefully, of objects in Archicad that we can use to decorate or to detail our models. And we can also download more of these from different BIM sites, including one that Graphisoft runs themselves. So to place any one of these, select the object and place it on the plan. Uh, continuing zone and mesh. Zone is very, very important when we're wanting to take quantifiable data out of Archicad, such as environmental analysis. And mesh is a great way to make terrains when we're modeling our site. Now, if we minimize this design window, we see that there's some others as well. The next one down is document, which is for documentation purposes, where we're no longer using three-dimensional objects, but we're now using two-dimensional objects, such as lines. Now, when we draw with a two-dimensional object like a line, it doesn't have any three-dimensional information. You can't see it on my model. Fills is another great example. We can draw with fills. It's like drawing with a line, but it's not hollow. It actually has a pattern, if you like, or a fill that sits inside of it. Arcs. We can draw center circles. We can draw three-point arcs. We can draw tangent arcs. Polylines just mean that the lines join together. So it's a multi-point vector line. And then we've got a whole lot more here. And these ones from here down, drawing, section, elevation, interior, works base, um, works sheet, sorry, details, change, are ways of amending or viewing our 3D drawing. And then finally under more, we have a few more two-dimensional tools such as spline and some three-dimensional tools such as lamps and cameras for viewing a three-dimensional model. But because these aren't as common, it's placed in more instead of under design. So that's a quick look at our toolbar. There is a lot to go through here, but as an introduction to Archicad, that's enough for now.